So for today's discussion, we will going to discuss the history of the parallel postulate or the fifth postulate of Euclid. But first, before we proceed, let us quote the five postulates from book one of Euclid's element. So here are the five postulates. So postulate one, to draw a straight line from any point to any point. Postulate 2, to produce a finite straight line continuously in a straight line. Postulate 3, to describe a circle with any center and distance. Postulate 4, that all right angles are equal to one another. And lastly, postulate 5, that if a straight line falling on two straight, on two straight lines make the interior angles on the same side less than two right angles, the two straight lines, if produced indefinitely, meet on that side on which are the angles less than the two right angles. So, here let us first review about the five postulates. So, postulate 1, one can draw a straight line from any point to any point. So, one can draw a straight line from any point to any point. So, that's the postulate 1. Then, postulate 2, one can produce a finite straight line continuously in a straight line. So, one can produce a finite. Finite means meron siyang end or meron siyang hangganan. So, one can produce a finite straight line continuously in a straight line. So, Euclid is saying here that you can produce a line segment, line segment, to any length you want, okay? You can produce a line segment to any length you want. So, kung gusto mong i-extend ito hanggang dito, pwede, or hanggang dyan. So, imagine that meron tayong mahabang line here, then you can extend that line segment to any length you want, okay? That is postulate 2, that one can produce a finite straight line continuously, in straight line. So, yun. Next, let us proceed to postulate 3. One can describe a circle with any center and radius. So, for example, here, circle with center A with a radius of 2 cm. So, yun. One can describe a circle with any center and radius. So, another example, circle with center A with radius, a uh, circle with center B, rather, B with radius of 4 cm. Circle with center C with radius of 7 cm. So, next, postulate 4. All right angles are equal to one another. So, ano nga ba yung right angles? Diba, ang right angles have uh, 90 degrees, diba? So, 90 degrees is equal to 90 degrees since all right angles are equal. So, tulad ng mga nasa figure natin, we have angle ABC, we have angle DEF, and angle G, H, I. And that all, uh, that three are uh, all right angles. So, lahat ng yan is equal to one another. Since they have same uh, angle, 90, which is 90 degrees. So, next, postulate 5. If a straight line falling on two straight lines make the interior angles on the same side less than two right angles the two straight lines if produced indefinitely meet in that side in which the angle are less than two right angles so if we notice the fur the first four postulates are short simple and intuitive however the five uh the fifth rather 
The fifth one is called parallel postulate is not short or simple. It sounds more like something you would try to prove than something you would take as a given. So, maybe isa to sa mga rason kung bakit uh, kung bakit gusto nilang uh, gusto ng mga mathematicians noon na i-separate itong postulate 5 kasi nga, 'di ba? The first four postulate are short, simple and intuitive. Samantalang tong postulate 5 is not, 'di ba? Not short and not simple. So, here ano nga ba itong postulate 5? So, if a line falling on two straight lines, okay? So, if a straight if a straight line if a straight line eto if a straight line falling on two straight lines so falling on two straight lines so eto falling on two straight lines so if a line or if a straight line falling on two straight lines makes the interior angles on the same side less than two right angles. So, meron tayong mga interior angles dito and itong angle 1 and angle 2 is the interior angles on the same side which is less than two right angles. So, two right angles and one right angle is 90, right? So, two right angles. So, 90 degrees plus 90 degrees is equal to 180 degrees, right? So, let's erase first. So, here, it says here that on the same side, less than two right angles. So, this, the sum of these two interior angles, angle 1 and angle 2, the sum of these two interior angles are less than two right angles or less than 180 degrees. So, the two straight line, the two straight lines, eto, the two straight lines, if produce indefinitely, kapag in-extend daw natin siya, meet in that side in which the angles are less than two right angles. So, magmi-meet daw itong dalawang line na to, dun sa side kung saan yung sum ng angle natin is less than 180 degrees. So, yung side kung saan merong sum yung interior angles natin na less than 180 degrees, Doon daw magmi-meet itong dalawang line na to kapag in-extend natin siya. So, here, makikita natin nag-meet siya at point A. So, point A is the intersection of these two lines if we extend this. So, yun yung ibig sabihin ni Euclid sa postulate 5. So, uulitin ko. Yung side kung saan yung interior angles natin is, or yung side kung saan yung sum ng interior angles natin is less than 180 degrees. So, we have angle 1 plus angle 2 equal, uh, is less than, rather, less than 180 degrees. So, since angle 1 and angle 2, the sum of these two angles are less than 180 degrees, therefore, ito yung side kung saan magmi-meet yung dalawang line kapag in-extend natin sila. So, let's erase this one. Now, let's proceed to the next page. So, now we have uh, parallel postulate A, B, and C. So, first, dito muna tayo. 
So, eto yung uh, uh, same sila nung diniscuss ko uh, a while back. So, this is the uh, interior angles or the side of interior angles where the sum of this uh, angle A and angle B is less than 180 degrees. So, they will meet at this side. So, here, let's proceed to parallel postulate B. So, makikita natin itong parallel lines na to. So, parallel, so ano nga bang parallel lines? So, parallel lines are lines that never intersect or never meet. Kahit pa extend natin yung dalawang line na yan, hindi hindi magmi-meet since they are parallel. So, now, let's proceed to par uh, parallel postulate C. So, in this case, here we have uh, angle 1 and angle 2. So, what if uh, the sum of angle 1 and angle 2 is closer to 180 degrees but is still less than ha? Huh? So, if the sum of this angle, angle 1 plus angle 2 is less than 180 degrees. So, what if, for example, um, so, what if kung uh, ang sum ng angle 1 and angle 2 natin is 179.999. So, something like that. Okay? Gets nyo ba? So, what if kung yung sum nitong interior angles natin na to, tong dalawang to is 179.9999. So, that is still less than 180 degrees, right? So, yun. What if ganyan yung case? Kapag ba, uh, kapag ba in-extend natin itong dalawang line na to is magmimit pa rin sila kung ganun yung sum nitong uh, angle 1 and angle 2 natin. So, ito, kunwari in-extend natin ng in-extend, pati rin itong isa, in-extend, in-extend. Pag in-extend ba natin siya ng in-extend, uh, mag intersect pa rin ba kaya sila? Magmimit pa din ba sila? So, kung gagawin natin yun, i-extend ng i-extend natin, lalagpas na tayo sa screen natin. Pero hindi pa rin natin na hanap. Hindi pa rin natin alam kung saang point sila nag-meet or kung nag-meet nga ba sila. So, ang tanong, so yun yung isa sa naging uh, problem ng mga mathematicians natin noon. So, paano mo nasabi na mag-meet sila? How sure you are? Gaano ka kasigurado na magmi-meet nga ba sila kapag in-extend ng in-extend ng, ng in-extend natin itong dalawang uh, line na to. So, yun na nga yung problem ng mga mathematicians natin noon. So, yun na nga yung naging problem ng mga mathematicians natin about this fifth postulate. So, the fact that the fifth postulate of Euclid was considered unsatisfactory comes from the period not long after it was proposed. Poseidonius, Ptolemy, Proclus, and others tried either to prove the postulate from the others or to replace it with another they deemed more satisfactory. So, yun na nga. Dahil doon, uh, several attempts have been made to prove the fifth, the fifth postulate. So, maraming mathematicians yung nag-attempt to prove that fifth postulate. So, they um, even want to replace it with another they deemed more satisfactory. So, sino nga ba yung mga mathematicians na yun? So, uh, isa na dito si... Proclus Diadocus. So, he lived from 411 to 485 uh, from Constantinople, Turkey to Athens, Greece. So, um, Proclus is called 
in Alexandria. He made commentary on Euclid's Elements, which be, uh, which became a major source of what we know of what we know of ancient Greek geometry. So he was known as the last of the classic Greek philosophers, and he is the one who thought Platonism. So let's proceed. So Proclus. So Proclus uh, wrote commentaries on the fifth postulate, and his commentary is one of the main source of information on Greek geometry. So he did not actually invent or uh, did not write his own mathematics, but he did ex extensive critics and commentaries of works of early mathematicians. So, he criticized the parallel postulate as follows. So, this ought even to be struck out of the postulate uh, postulates altogether for it is a theorem involving many difficulties. So, struck out daw. So, yun na nga, isa siya sa uh, nagpatunay uh, or sinubukang i-prove yung fifth postulate ni Euclid. So, um, Proclus mentioned that Ptolemy, uh, do you remember Ptolemy? So, Ptolemy is the author of Almages. If na aalala nyo siya sa uh, history of mathematics natin noon. So, Ptolemy is the author of Almages. So, Ptolemy tried to prove the fifth postulate. But Proclus think he did not succeed in proving the fifth postulate. And the proof given by Ptolemy is no longer accepted. So, let's move to the next page. So, now, Proclus said that the problem is, Euclid said that if you prolong the line, ito yung line na tinutukoy. So, if you prolong the line, so kapag in-extend daw natin yung line, they, they will meet eventually. And that means that they are not parallel since nag-meet sila. But, how do we know? Sabi ni Proclus, how do we know? How sure we are? Gaano ka kasigurado? Paano natin malalaman? So, yun yung sabi ni Proclus. Because it could be that we keep prolonging them, then we just don't know. Kapag in-extend natin siya, then we just don't know. Maybe they are asymptotes of a certain types of conics, sabi ni Proclus. Paano natin nasisigurado? Paano natin malalaman? Eh, baka uh, maaring asymptotes lang daw sila asymptote means uh, you know asymptotic what asymptotic is so asymptotic means that the line getting closer and closer but never to touch so yun yung ibig sabihin ng asymptote uh, the line getting closer and closer but never to touch or never meet never intersect. So, yun yung ibig sabihin ng asymptotes. So, yun yung sabi ni Proclus. How do we know? Because it could be that we keep prolonging them, then we just don't know. Maybe they are asymptotes of a certain types of conics. So, paano daw kapag baka asymptotes lang? Maybe, sabi niya. Paano pag asymptotes lang pala sila? Paano kung Yung line is getting closer and closer but not to touch. Hindi sila magbimit. Asymptote. Yun nga yung point ni Proclus. Paano? So, parang yun yung naging problem or yung question sa isip ni Proclus. Parang yun yung uh, naging problem niya. So, uh, let's proceed to his uh, proof. Proclus submitted a proof of his own. So, this is the statement that is equivalent to the fifth postulate. So, a line intersecting one of 
two parallel lines intersects the other. So, Proclus attempted to prove that if a straight line cuts one of two parallel lines, it will cut the other also. So, kapag itong uh, straight line na to daw, cuts one, so ito yung parallel, dalawang parallel lines natin. So, if a straight line cuts one of the two parallel lines, it will cut the other also, sabi niya. So, kung in-extend natin itong line na to, then it will cut the other line also. So, yun yung ibig sabihin ni Proclus. <clears throat> so, let's proceed to the next slide. So, given two parallel lines A, B, and C, D, a, B, and C, D. With a straight line E, F, ito, straight line E, F, cutting A, B, this line E, F, cuts line A, B at point E, tulad ng sabi dito, at E, assume that a point P, ito, moves along E, F, yan, along E, F in the direction of F. So, for example, Yan. Extend natin to. Yan. So, assume na straight talaga yung line natin, no? So, sabi dito, the point P moves along EF. So, yan. Yung point P na to moves along EF in the direction of F. So, Maglalagay tayo, kunwari, ng label dito. So, P, P prime. So, ang next is P double prime. Tapos, yung susunod, P triple prime. Tapos, yung susunod, P quadruple prime. So, <clears throat> A point P moves along EF in the direction of F. Then, the length of the perpendicular from P to AB. So, itong, ito yung tintukoy na perpendicular from P to AB. So, ito yung AB natin. From P to AB. Perpendicular from P to AB. Eventually becomes greater than any length. And hence, greater than the distance between the parallels. So, ang sinasabi dito is become, becomes greater than any length. Kasi kung papansin ninyo, dito sa first na perpendicular na na-construct natin, so, maliit lang siya. So, as nag-e-extend itong line EF natin, mas sumahaba din yung perpendicular line na nabubuo or nako-construct natin. So, Para makita natin, ilagay din natin yung mabubuong perpendicular line dito. Tsaka perpendicular line dito. So, each P yan. So, each P. So, for example, extend din natin tong line na yan. So, each P meron tayong perpendicular line na mako-construct. So, dito, ito yung sinasabi dito na becomes greater than any length. So, pahaba ng pahaba as... This line EF is nag-extend siya. So, greater than any length, hence greater than the distance between the parallels. So, kung papansin ninyo, yung distance ng parallel natin, ito yung parallel lines natin. So, yung distance ng parallel natin is, so maglagay tayo. So, yung exact na distance talaga ng parallel line natin is, yan, di ba? Wait lang. So, from here to here. So, yan yung... So, imagine that it is perpendicular line. Kasi mahirap mag, magsulat dito. So, hindi masyadong perfect yung straight line natin. So, this red line, ito yung uh, distance ng parallel line natin. Yung exact distance niya. So, as this line EF is nag-e-extend siya, nag-e-extend, 
Then, humahaba din ng humahaba yung nakoconstruct natin perpendicular line until that it is greater than the distance between the parallel. So, ito yung exact distance. So, kapag humaba pa itong line EF natin, mas mahaba na rin yung perpendicular line na mabubuo than yung distance between the parallel line natin. So, nagigets ba? Hence, uh, hence, EF, ito, EF must cut, must cut CD. So, EF, this segment EF must cut, or line EF must cut line CD. So, dito sa proof ni Proclus, the fallacy lies the fallacy lies in the assumption that parallels are everywhere equally distant or at any rate so dun siya nagkaroon ng error kasi identify niya yung parallel lines as uh, lines everywhere equally distant sabi niya kasi di ba in the definition of parallel lines di ba ang nandun lang sa definition is Lines that never intersect or never meet. And nothing in the definition, okay, wala sa definition yung sinasabi niyang uh, parallel lines are everywhere, equally distant. So, yun, nag-assume kasi siya dun sa definition ng parallel line at dun siya nagkaroon ng error. So, now, let's proceed to the next uh, person. He is John Wallace. So, who is John Wallis. So, he lived from 1616, 1616 to 1703. So, he was credited with introducing what we now call the number line and our current symbol for infinity. So, infinity. So, we also give credit to his... Uh, product or product formula for pi. So, John Wallis became interested in the work of Nasiraddin and described his demonstrations in a le lecture at, at Oxford in 1651. So, itong si Nasiraddin kasi is mas nauna tong uh, nag- uh, nag-attempt din na mag-prove nung fifth postulate ni Euclid. And itong si John Wallis naman, na sumunod, which is naging interested siya dun sa work ni Nasirad din. So, in 1663, John Wallis offered a proof of his own. We describe it here because it is typical of those proofs which make use of an assumption equivalent to the fifth postulate. So, Wallis suggested the assumption that given a, uh, given a triangle, it is possible to construct another triangle similar to it and of any size. So, yun yung statement na uh, equivalent dun sa fifth postulate ni Euclid. So, here, John Wallis suggested the assumption that given a triangle, yun na nga, it is possible to construct another triangle similar to it and of any size. Then, he argues essentially as follows. So, ito yung figure ni John Wallis. So, we further discuss this in this slide. So, statement that is equivalent to the fifth postulate. Tulad ng sabi ko kanina, yung statement na yun is equivalent to dun sa uh, fifth postulate ni Euclid. Given a triangle, it is possible to construct another triangle similar to it and of any size. So, here, given lines AB, lines AB, eto, and CD, cut by transversal EF, transversal line EF in points G 
eto points G and H. So given a lines AB and CD cut by the transversal EF in points G and H. So nakat siya itong dalawang line na to is nakat ng transversal line EF at point G and H respectively. And with the sum of angles BGH and DHG, so asan yung angle na yun? Uh, BGH, so itong angle na to, BGH, BGH, and angle DHG, DHG, so itong angle na to, so, the sum of angles BGH and DHG less than 2 right angles or less than 180 degrees, it is to be proved that AB, line AB and CD will meet, so prove that AB and CD will meet if so, we'll meet if sufficiently produce. So, kapag in-extend daw natin siya, is magmimit sila at this direction or this side. Since the sum of these uh, two angles are, of these two interior angles are less than 180 degrees. So, ngayon, ano nga ba yung tinutukoy ni John Wallis na given a triangle, it is possible to construct another triangle similar to it and of any size. So, eto yon If segment HG, eto, segment HG is move along EF, eto, EF, move along EF with HD rigidly attached to it. HD. So, naka-attach itong HD dito sa segment na to until H co coincides with the initial position of G. So, itong point H natin, which is naka-attach dito sa uh, segment na to So, this segment HD, kapag unti-unti nating minove itong H here, for example, so dito, sa point na to minove natin itong H dito. So, mapupunta na dito yung uh, segment HD natin. So, as we move unti-unti, kunwari dito ulit yung point H. Papataas yan eh. Papataas ng papataas. Unti-unti, itataas natin itong, itong HD na to. Hanggang makarating siya hanggang makarating siya sa dun sa sinasabi niyang initial position of G. So, hanggang makarating siya dito sa G. Yan, G. So, yun, until H. So, papataas ng papataas, taas natin tong H, segment HD, hanggang sa makarating siya sa posi initial position of G. So, HD Sabi dito, takes the position GI. So, pag nakarating siya dito sa initial position ng G, it takes the position GI. Takes the position, takes the position GI here. Lying entirely above GB. Lying entirely above GB. So, ito yung GB natin. GB. So, this line here is lying entirely above dito sa tuktok ng GB natin. So, nandito siya sa tuktok ng GB. Hence, during its motion, HD must at some time cut GB as uh, as for example. So, tulad nga nang sabi ko, habang unti-unti natin uh, minumove itong HD along this line is nakakat daw niya itong GB. Tama naman, di ba? So, as it moves along this line, 
So, nakakat niya itong itong GB natin. Yan, o. Oh, diba? Nakakat. So, for example, sabi niya dito, when it coincides with JK, cutting GB at L. Sabi dito, when it coincides with JK, asan yung JK? So, ito. For example, let's erase this one para hindi kayo malito. So, sabi dito, when it coincides with JK. So, coincides with JK. So, itong HD na to is nag-coincides daw with JK. Coincides with JK. Cutting GB at L. So, cutting GB, ito yung GB natin. Cutting GB at point L. So, kapag nag-coincides itong HD dito sa JK, it will cut GB at point L. Right? Now, if one constructs a triangle on base J, uh, GH, rather, on base GH, so, burahin na natin to. Sabi dito, now, if one construct triangle on base GH, GH, so, ito yung magiging base daw ng triangle natin. So, now, let's construct that triangle with base GH. So, yan yung base ng triangle natin. So, let's uh, extend this line here and this line here. So, when we construct a triangle with base G at saka base na H, So, magkakaroon tayo ng triangle na ganito. So, GH yung base natin. So, magkakaroon tayo ng triangle na tulad nito. So, for example, perfect yung triangle natin, no? Um, sabi dito, Now, if we construct triangle on base GH, ito na nga yung base ng triangle natin. So, we form or construct triangle similar to triangle GJL. GJL. Similar to triangle GJL. So, ito yung sinasabi niyang triangle na isa. G. So, G. Wait lang. G, J, L. Nako, ang hirap mag... <laughs> Yan. G, J, L. So, yung triangle na to. Sorry, hindi siya perfect. <laughs> so, basta ito. Yan. I-assume nyo na lang na perfect yung lines natin, no? Mahirap kasi magsulat dito sa screen. So, yun. Sabi dito, Now, if one construct a triangle on base GH, So, ito na nga, itong red na triangle on base GH, similar to triangle GJL. So, similar siya dito sa triangle GJL. And this has been assumed to be possible. It is evident that HD, ito, segment HD, must cut uh, GB. Dapat makat niya itong GB. So, ito yung tinutukoy na GB. So, HD must cut. So, imove natin along this line. Tulad nung ginawa natin kanina. Imove natin tong segment na to along this line. So, it will cut GB. Ito yung GB natin. It will cut GB at point L. So, nabuo natin itong another triangle na to. So, ito na nga yung sinasabi ni Wallis na uh, it is possible to construct another triangle similar to it and of any size. So, kung papansinin natin, similar itong triangle na to, itong uh, larger triangle is similar to this smaller triangle but uh, different lang yung size nila 
So, ito nga. Ito na yon. Given any triangle ABC and given any segment DE, there exists a triangle DEF, DEF, similar, that is similar to ABC. So, ito na nga yun, diba? Similar na triangle tong dalawa, but different in size. So, kung magnify natin, itong smaller triangle na to, is magiging the same lang din siya, tulad nito. So, yun yung ibig sabihin ni Wallis, dun sa postulate, or dun sa proof niya. Now, let's move to the other mathematician who prove, or attempt to prove the fifth postulate of, of Euclid, named Girolamo Sacheri. So, Girolamo Ch Sacheri, 1667 to 1733, was a philosopher and mathematician. He is renowned for Euclid's Ab Omni Nevo Vindicatus, which translate to Euclid freed of every flow, which was his last publication and the second work in non-Euclidean geometry. So, Girolamo uh, Sacheri is a philosopher and mathematician. So, Uh, itong Euclid Freed of Every Flow was his last publication at saka yung second work niya in non-Euclidean geometry. So, Sacheris wanted to establish the soundness of Euclidean geometry by means of reductio ad absurdum proof or proof by contradiction of any alternative to Euclid's parallel postulate. He assumed it to be false and intended to find a contradiction. Euclid postulate is equivalent to the following statement. The sum of the internal angles of triangle is 180 degrees. So, etong si Sacheri is nag-attempt din siya to prove the fifth postulate of Euclid using contradiction. So, eto nga yung statement na equivalent dun sa fifth postulate ni Euclid. So, sabi dito, the sum of the internal angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So, Girolamo Sacheri, here to prepare for the application of his method, Sacheri made use of a figure with which we are already acquainted. This is the isosceles quadrilateral with the two base angles, right angles. So, this is the base angles and this is the summit angles. Yan. So, let's proceed to the next slide. So, tulad ng sabi ko, this is the base angles, A tsaka B, and these are the summit angles, Angle C and angle B. So, assuming that in quadrilateral ABCD, ABCD, AD and BC, AD, ito, and BC, ito, were equal. So, equal itong dalawa, dalawang segment na to, and that the angles at A, and B, itong angles na to, were right angles. Sacheri easily proved without using the fifth postulate or its consequence says that the angles at C and, A and D, ito, were equal and that line joining the midpoints of A, B, and D, C, A, B, A, B, and DC was perpendicular to both lines. So, uh, Sacheri proved that angle C and angle D is uh, equal without using the fifth postulate. So, sabi din dito na and that the line joining the midpoints so, let's um, determine the midpoint. So, The midpoint of AB is here. Assume. Let's assume here. The midpoint of AB and 
the midpoint of DC. Dito yung midpoint ng DC. So, sabi dito, so, sabi dito, uh, the line joining the midpoints, so, the line joining the midpoint, so, so, ito yung midpoint ng AB, midpoint, ito yung midpoint ng AB, at ito yung midpoint ng DC. So, the line, ito, the line joining the midpoints of AB, AB, and DC, DC, was perpendicular to both lines. Was perpendicular, so was perpendicular to both lines. Yan, perpendicular to both lines. Therefore, yun na nga, point C and uh, angle C rather. I'm so sorry. So, therefore, angle C and angle D are equal, which is also a right angles. So, under the Euclidean uh, hypothesis, the angles C and D are known to be right angles. So, an assumption that they are acute or obtuse would imply the falsity of the postulate. So, itong si Sachiri, nag-assume siya na what if itong summit angles natin are acute or di kaya obtuse, sabi niya. So, this was exactly the uh, what Sachiri's plan required. He considered three hypotheses, calling them the hypothesis of right angle the hypothesis of obtuse angle, and the hypothesis of the acute angle. So, ito na nga yun. So, merong three cases. There are three possible cases. So, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na what if kung yung summit is right angle, kung obtuse, or kung acute. So, ito din yung tatlong hypothesis na binanggit ko kanina. Hypothesis of right angle, hypothesis of, of uh, obtuse, angle and hypothesis of acute angle. So, uh, dito pala, sa tatlong cases na to, uh, itong case 3 lang yung hindi niya napatunayan or hindi niya na-prove. So, these two cases, case 1 and case 2, madali lang niyang na-prove itong dalawang to. While itong case 3, uh, he failed to prove this one. Uh, no matter how hard he does, he is, uh, he is still failed to prove this uh, case 3. So, yun, dahil nga sa kagustuhan niyang ma-prove itong case 3, um, he was able to deduce many strange result. So, ito yung mga uh, ilan sa mga na-prove niya or sinubukan niyang i-prove or yeah he stated and proved a number of general propositions so ilan lang sa mga to yung general propositions na na prove niya so number 1 if one of the hypothesis is true for a single quadrilateral of the type uh, type under consideration it is true for every such quadrilateral number 2 on the hypothesis of the right angle, the obtuse angle, or the acute angle, the sum of the angles of a triangle is always equal to greater than or less than two right angles. If there exists a single triangle for uh, which the sum of the angles is equal to greater than or less than two right angles, then follows the truth of the hypothesis of the right angle, the obtuse angle or the acute angle. Number four, two straight lines lying in the same plane either have a common perpendicular or if produced in the same direction either meet on other ones at a finite distance or else continually approach on uh, approach one another. So these are just uh, some 
or among the more important general proposition that he have stated and proved. So, dahil nga sa kagustuhan niya na ma-prove yung case 3, so ilan sa mga to yung, kumbaga parang, ah, uh, na-deduce niya. So, tulad nga ng nakasaad dito, he was able to deduce many strange results. So, madami talaga, madaming, ah, uh, madaming general propositions yung nagain niya. So, he was able to deduce many strange results, but not a contradiction. So, still, he failed to prove the case 3. So, ang reason na lang niya, or yung sinabi na lang niya is ito. The hypothesis of the acute angle is absolutely false because it is repugnant to the nature of the straight line. <laughs> so, yun. So, yun, yun yung naging reason niya na uh, yung hypothesis nga daw ng acute angle is absolutely false since hindi niya na-prove yun. No matter how hard he does. So, yun nga yung reason niya na it is repugnant on the nature of straight line daw. Nature of the straight line. So, uh, actually, hindi pa dito nagtatapos yung uh, history of parallel postulate. So, it will be continued to discuss by um, either Miss Agabin or Miss Pagulayan. So, that that's all for today. Thank you. Keep safe. And God bless everyone.